I'm Korma. Welcome to the Gourmet Vegetarian Cooking Video Encyclopedia. Dals are thick, hearty soups made from split legumes. They're rich in iron, B vitamins, and vegetable protein, and they combine beautifully with grains, seeds, nuts, and dairy products. This edition, we're going to show you how to prepare such dals as arha dal, creamy yellow pea soup, mung beans and tomato soup, green, creamy split pea and carrot soup, and cream of vegetable soup. So let's begin. Dals are high protein legumes and the soups that are made from these are also known as dal or dal soup. And there are literally hundreds and hundreds of varieties of dals that you can obtain. In the West, generally uh, one or two dozen are commonly available. And I'm going to show you some of these. So firstly here we have green split peas and yellow split peas. These are the most commonly available types of dal in the shops. Whenever a recipe calls for dal, you can use either the green or the yellow. They're inexpensive and they're rich in protein. Next we have the red or pink lentils. These are the quickest cooking lentils. I think uh, I've sometimes cooked a pot of these in 10 minutes. So whenever you're in a hurry, they're ideal. They're also reasonably inexpensive. When you cook them, they go a brownie colour. So next we have Tour dal, T W O R, sometimes known as Arha dal, A R H A R. These are more expensive than the uh, split peas, although they look a little similar. They have a completely different taste, more refined taste. And if you look closely, you'll notice that they're they are different because they're smaller, they're more even in colour, and they have more of a, a kidney shape than a round shape. Sometimes you can buy a variety which is very oily. These are the uh, unoily variety. Next here we have. Urad dal, very, very rich in protein, one of the highest next to soybeans. These are the black whole urad dal. These are the split urad dal, which is, has, has had the husk removed. And the ones in the middle here, uh, I've still got their skin on. Now, if you recall also, urad dal is good if it's used as a spice. You can saute it in ghee and it has a very, very nutty flavour. Generally, that's done with the split variety. These have a very unusual flavour, quite distinct from all the other types of dals. Very popular in India. Not very well known in the West, however. Next, we have mung beans, which are very well known, especially in their whole form, like this. The whole green mung beans are used in Chinese cuisine to make uh, mung bean sprouts. They can be sprouted very successfully. They're also very good for making soup. We're making a delicious mung bean and tomato soup in this edition. Uh, also, the split mung, uh, which has been skinned, or the split mung with its skin still on, is equally wonderful for soups, especially in, in the form when its skin has been removed. It forms a very, very creamy soup, which is very high in available protein, especially when it's served with rice. Next here we have two types of chickpeas. These are the most common chickpeas, the whole large chickpeas. They can be soaked and cooked like all the other types of dals. They take probably the longest out of all of these because they're quite large. And here we have the black chana, which is a small variety of chickpea, less known in the West, commonly used in India, and has a very earthy, nutty flavor. And they're very tasty when they're cooked whole like this. Now here we have chana dal, which is often mistaken for split peas. In fact, it's different. And once again, it has a very subtle flavor. And finally, we have green lentils which when cooked 
form a very, very luscious brown soup. Once again, they cook very quickly and they're very, very rich in protein. So here's just some of the many, many varieties of dals which you can use. Some of these, of course, are more uh, easily available than others. Now let me show you our ingredients for our deluxe yellow pea arha dal. We've got our lentils themselves, three quarters of a cup of arha dal. We've got four cups of water cooking on the stove in preparation. And in our spice department, we've got one teaspoon of fresh minced ginger root, one half of a teaspoon of fresh green chili, half a teaspoon of turmeric, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of mustard seeds, the black variety, one teaspoon of cumin seeds, one eighth of a teaspoon of fenugreek, one eighth of a teaspoon of asafoetida. We've got two bay leaves, two and a half tablespoons of lemon juice, two teaspoons of honey, and two tablespoons of ghee. Now the first thing to do before you even start to prepare any dal is to carefully sift through all your dal to find any foreign matter. When I say foreign matter, I mean rocks or bits and pieces of other miscellaneous things that sometimes find their way into batches of dal for different reasons. Let's have a look closely, shall we? So firstly, I like to move all my dal to one side of the plate and then gradually start sifting through looking for anything which shouldn't be there like little withered pieces of dal, bits of uh, skin off the dal, or bits of vegetable matter, stalks and grit and occasionally you'll find rocks like this one here. This is quite an enormous rock actually. Have a look at that. Now. Next thing we have to do is wash the dal. That's very important. Uh, just like you wash your rice, you have to wash the dal. Let's take it over to the sink. Now dal sometimes is not as dirty as rice, but sometimes it's dirtier, so you have to just wash it anyway. And this is the best way to do it, I've found, because you don't lose any of the, of the lentils, and at the same time you can easily change the water as you go along and you can test how much dirt you've got out by how dirty the water is. So do this once, drain off all the water, tip it away and then we fill up the water again. And you should do this two or three times until the water is nice and clean. I think one more time should do it. That should be enough. Now there's our nice clean dal. Let's bring this over to our pot of water and start combining some of our ingredients. On the stove here, we have our pot of water. Let's put in our dal. Like so. We're also going to put in our lemon juice, Our ginger, fresh minced peeled ginger, and the fresh chili, turmeric, and our couple of bay leaves, and our salt. Like so. Give it a stir. I'm also going to add about half a tablespoon of ghee. Bring your dal to the boil. When it does so, give it a bit of a stir, turn it down to a simmer, put on the lid, and in about 50 or 60 minutes, the beans will have softened and broken down. Let's have a look at our dal here. 
It's looking good. It's all smooth and homogenous. There's no whole dials in there anymore. It's just a, a nice creamy soup. Let's beat up any little last remaining lumps that might be there. Now let's add our final spices. Let's take our ghee here, place it in our ladle, and heat it up over our flame. This is a very traditional method of adding spices to liquid preparations such as dal. It's called a chance. Sometimes it's very volatile, uh, but it's always exciting. So we've got our mustard seeds, cumin seeds, fenugreek and asafoetida. So let's make sure our ghee is good and melted and hot. And then we're going to add all those spices. Now add our cumin seeds. Fenugreek, asafoetida. And let's add it to the soup. That's a really fiery one. That adds that hearty, fiery flavour to the dal. It often sets fire to the kitchen curtains and some of the accessories, but that's part of the fun. And there it is, deluxe yellow pea arha dal. green mung bean and tomato soup. Here's one of my favourite soups. It's very colourful, very tasty, very simple and very delicious. Let me show you what it contains. We've got here three quarters of a cup of whole green mung beans. They've been washed. We've got one cup of chopped tomatoes, two and a half tablespoons of ghee, two and a half tablespoons of fresh lime or lemon juice, one teaspoon of whole cumin seeds, half a teaspoon of asafoetida, half a teaspoon of turmeric, one tablespoon of ginger, half a teaspoon of fresh minced chilies, one tablespoon of brown sugar, one teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of minced parsley, and six cups of hot water. Now let's add our ginger to our boiling water. Fresh minced ginger, and the fresh minced chilies, and the turmeric. And also mung beans. Now these should be brought to the boil and simmered for about 45 minutes. Well, it's been about 45 minutes now. Let's have a look at our dal. Oh yes, it's certainly breaking up. See the mung beans are still discernible, but it's very pulpy. That's exactly how it should be. We don't want it to cook down completely to a mush. We still want to have a few whole mung beans here. That's very important. Now let's add our tomatoes. The riper the tomatoes for this, the better, I think. Lime juice. A little brown sugar. Salt. And parsley. Let's fold that in. Now we're going to add our chance or our fried spices. This is very important. Let's turn on our flame. Let's take our ghee and melt it over our flame.
Once the gaze melted, let's add our cumin seeds. Now I always like to fry my cumin seeds till they're very dark for this dial. It seems to add something very special to the flavor. Also, at this stage, your soup should still be boiling. Put in your asfoetida. And put it in the soup. Bring it back to the boil. Stir it around and there it is. Hearty, whole, green, mung bean and tomato soup. Creamy green split pea soup with carrots. Let me show you what it contains. Three carrots cut into quarter inch rings. These have been peeled, by the way, like so. We've also got one cup of green split peas. These have been washed, they've been soaked, and they've been drained. I think I soaked these for about 45 minutes to an hour. In our pot over here, we've got seven and a half cups of water, which has just come to the boil. And in our spice section here, we've got half of a teaspoon of turmeric, one teaspoon of ground coriander seeds, one teaspoon of minced fresh ginger root, half a teaspoon of minced fresh chilies, one and a quarter teaspoons of salt, one and a quarter teaspoons of cumin seeds, half a teaspoon of asphatida, two tablespoons of minced fresh coriander, four tablespoons of ghee. So, the first thing we're going to do, as per usual with the dal, is we're going to get the legumes into the water. This is one of my most popular soups. People really appreciate this because it's very, very creamy and very, very smooth. The green split peas seem to have a slightly different texture than the yellow ones. Now, we're going to bring that to the boil, but before we do, I'm going to add my ingredients here, not all of them, just the ginger and the chilies and the coriander and the turmeric. And let's not forget, of course, the carrots. Stir that around. So let's turn it down to a simmer, put on our lid. Let's cook it down now for about 45 minutes or an hour, actually even more than an hour. The idea is we want our beans to cook down to a smooth, creamy paste. The smoother and creamier the better. Well, it's been about an hour and a quarter now. I thought I'd leave it a little longer. Oh yes, this is really creamy. The beans have all broken up as you can see. There's no whole beans left in there at all. It's ready to go. All we need to do now is add our seasonings. Let's heat our ghee over the flame here in our little ladle. Let's add our cumin seeds. Let's cook them until they brown. Let's add our asfoetida. And let's add it to the soup. Wow, that's a fiery one. That really adds that fiery flavor. So that's ready. All we need to do now is to add our salt, and our fresh minced coriander. And it's done. 
creamy green pea soup with carrots. It's a winner. Creamy vegetable soup. I thought we'd start this section with a simple to prepare, delightfully flavoured vegetable soup, which is like a East meets West in the kitchen department. We've got some fresh chopped vegetables here, about four or six cups of assorted vegetables that I've chosen for their colour appeal mainly. You can use any vegetables you like. I've got potatoes, celery, carrots, pumpkin, zucchini, beans and spinach. We've got a few spices here along with the three tablespoons of ghee. We've got two bay leaves. We've got half a teaspoon of turmeric, one quarter of a teaspoon of asafoetida, one teaspoon of coriander powder, three tablespoons of butter, one quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper, one and a half teaspoons of salt. We're also going to use two cups of milk and two tablespoons of plain flour, as well as six to eight cups of water. So let me show you how to do it. First of all, take your ghee and we're going to sauté some of our spices. Firstly, asafoetida. And bay leaves. Got two bay leaves there. Sauté those for a few seconds. And our vegetables. Turmeric and coriander powder go in next. We're going to saute all these vegetables together for about five minutes. This enables the vegetables to be impregnated with the flavour of the spices. So after stir frying for about five minutes, you should add your salt, pepper and water. Now, after giving a couple of good stirs, you should bring the soup to the boil and then you should reduce it to a simmer. You should place a lid on and cook it for about an hour. Now, over here, I've got a pot which I've been cooking for about an hour and it's practically done. Let's have a look. Notice how the vegetables are soft but not mushy. I like my vegetables a little whole for this soup. They're very cooked but they're not falling apart. Everything's whole. So what we have to do next is we have to make our sauce which is going to be added into the vegetable soup in order to thicken it and make it creamy and rich. This is how it's done. First of all, take a small pan, place a flame underneath, melt the butter, not too quickly. We're going to make a roux a roux, you might say, is not a traditional Indian style of cooking. Well, that's true. That's why I said this is a, an East meets West soup. 
A roux is the French method of making a thickening agent to add to different liquid dishes. We're going to toast some plain flour and butter. Let's add our two tablespoons of flour to our butter. And just toast it for a little while. Then we're going to add our warm milk. So here's our bechamel sauce. We're going to add this to our soup. And keep stirring as you pour the sauce in. And now you just have to bring this back to the boil. When it comes back to the boil, you can let it simmer for another minute and your creamy vegetable soup is done. So there it is, just some of the many varieties of delicious soups and dals that you can make in the Indian vegetarian cuisine. Happy eating!